I'm Chris Petraki and this is All Things Art. Quick reminder to subscribe to the channel, give it a like so the YouTube masters rank it, and click the notification bell so that whenever I put out juicy videos, you'll get a notification. All right, this is the third and final installment of Art Direction Secrets that'll make your portrait stand out. And today we're gonna cover line quality. This is an often overlooked topic, but just by turning your attention to line quality and how other artists use it, and then attempting to get a little bit of mastery over it, this will go a long way to making your portraits stand out above the rest. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, as we navigate this question of objective, trying to find it and trying to clarify it using questions like, what's my why? What's the reason that I'm doing this? Using art direction to help us. Well, line quality is one of those drawing techniques that is so easy, but it's so impactful because at least graphically, it can make something pop off the page. Now, I wanna talk about a couple different kinds of lines. Basically, the straight line, the C curve, and the S curve. Now these lines are bold. They're the same width from top to middle to bottom. And how can you use them? Well, in the top two drawings, you've got one of the Ramones on the right, and then a character um, drawing I did of one of my friends on the left. You can see the line is pretty bold that outlines the contour. Also, J. Martin Studio great artist on Instagram. He's doing that with a white line. So you can do it with a black line. You can do it with a white line. So you can see that nice thick line that makes the character break away from the background. So you have this foreground figure ground relationship. And so we're breaking the figure away from the ground. And that background is the ground, this stuff here and this part, right? Obviously that's the figure. So a thick, even line around a character can suggest that the character is very approachable. It can break, again, the character off the page in a very graphic and strong way. So it contains something. It can be a good container. It's solid, let's say. Let's look at tapered dynamic lines. So what do I mean by tapered? You've got tapered from thin to thick to thin. So it's tapered at the edges, thick in the middle, right? So tapered at the edges, thick in the middle. Or we've got thick to thin, where it's thick to thin, or thin to thick, whatever. Those are the two kinds of lines that we're gonna look. They're, they tend to be dynamic. And let's take a look at some examples. Right in the middle is Alphonse Mucha in the late 19th century. This guy was a master drawer, draftsman, painter. He did huge murals. He did beautiful portraits. The line quality is so sensitive and it's so thick and thin and it's so varied. You can see this nice, delicate line work here. And then he, he does what we did in that first line that we looked at, that bold, even line that contains a figure so beautifully and that makes it pop off the page. And then we have some nice tapered lines, just like tapered and dynamic, like we're looking at now in the hands, right? In that wrist to that forearm and even in here. So he's got a lot of line variation here happening and it all constellates into just a beautiful thing to look at in my opinion. Then moving right top, we have Patrick Nagel. And his stuff was so popular in the 80s. His stuff was all over. It'd be in college dorms, it'd be in friends' apartments. He just saturated the market. And what's really sad is he died in his early 30s of a heart attack. And he's got that tapered kind of line that he did so well in the eyes, in the hair. We got the eyes, we got the hair. Um, and he's even got kind of that even line that he uses to contain things and separate out 
the face from this ground of sort of mauve purple and muted blue green right there so he's breaking things away and playing the organic shape of the head against the geometric shapes that are part of the background and foreground he's got the thick to thin here right he's got everything going great stuff and then here's a little character design I did down here and I've got a very thick to thin but overall thick line breaking the character away from the ground right creating a nice silhouette that's one of the design things that I'm concerned about and then inside is a lot of thick to thin lines in the hair in parts of the anatomy in how I model the cheekbone forehead neck and all that stuff so I'm using you know two or three kinds of lines in certain places that hopefully pop it off the page and make it look interesting but it's combined with silhouette as well as a design element the next lines are broken lines let's check out some broken lines that's basically this just what it sounds like a broken line We'll check out Egon Schiele, again, late 19th century, and Gustav Klimt, two masters that I love. I don't know if you're familiar with their work, but Egon Schiele, or Scheil, don't know how to pronounce his, his name, but his figures were awesome. They're very designy and distorted, but just the point here is that broken, kind of scratchy, line that can make someone look uneasy and erratic so if you want a character and you have one that's you want to convey that they're erratic they're scattered right you could probably think of movie characters like that you want that broken kind of broken up line okay their mind is jumping around it's broken it's not smooth logical and consistent here with Gustav Klimt on the right, he's got kind of, you know, a wavy kind of broken line. It's a lot more gentle, but still it's a little bit, there's lines together. It's not just one line, so it's a little nervous. Maybe it's transitory. Um, maybe they're mercur mercurial in their personality. Their mind changes a lot, and it's showing up in that line quality of really kind of they're there and then they're not there they keep moving that line quality can show a character like that okay let's keep on moving here so let's say you have one line I want to talk to you about atmospheric perspective because you can take that one line and just do a couple things with it one you can make it a little bit thinner and smaller and you can make it lighter so you can step the value range and as you do that look what happens that big thick black line looks like it's advancing the middle gray line looks like it's behind the big line on the left it's just a little bit behind it and then that thin light line looks like it's way in the distance so just by line weight Right, the line weight. And the value contrast. Oops. The value contrast gives that sense of atmosphere. So they call it atmospheric perspective. One of the easiest ways to convey depth in space and depth is one of the elements of design the other way to do it is linear perspective and that's kind of mathematical and harder to do so the atmospheric this one they also call it the laws of diminishing contrasts so contrast comes into play 
and you can have your value contrast diminish. So we go from dark to middle to light and that atmosphere that's in between you and let's say this furthest one, there's a lot of atmosphere. You're looking through a lot of particles, dust and so on and it just loses contrast. It also loses edge quality, edge crispness. So you could lose contrast in your edges and you'll go from a crisp, hard edge to let's say, you know, a soft or lost edge. And that can make something appear to be further away. It creates depth. Another one is color contrast. You, you lose color, colors get less saturated as they go away from you. The closer they are, the more saturated and the farther away, the more gray they get. Okay, so let's keep moving here and show you an example of toolkit on Instagram. And it's really nice how they've done this with some of that sort of diminishing contrast and creating the depth. So you've got the dark and thicker lines in the front of the face, and you've got the thin, wispy, broken, lighter value lines. And of course we look here first because that's where all the contrast is. So the contrast of value is high on the left side of the face and the contrast of value is low on the right side of the face. And so we notice on the left before we notice the right side of the head. Pretty simple, but pretty effective, right? Okay, a couple more quick examples. Casey Ba, one of my favorite portrait artists. Again, that nose is the closest thing to us, so that has the crispest lines, the greatest value contrast near that left nostril. Then the eye sockets, a little bit less crispness of line or of edge, a little bit less, a little bit less value contrast. And then it goes back even more. And, and you can see that atmosphere, that sense of atmosphere that he's playing around with, creating drama, mood, and depth. And then we've got Jay Martin Studio again, and he's got on the right side, all the contrast of value, contrast of line, thick and thin, and contrast of detail, all on that right side of the figure, especially in the face, so that's what you see first. And you see the left side of the figure second. So these are all Toolkit, Casey Ba, J. Martin Studio using the laws of din diminishing contrast, but I wanted to focus in on that line quality of thick and thin and dark, medium, light, and the edges of hard, firm, and soft. And how just those simple tools, they're like the Do Re Mi on a scale. If you can put those together, you can form chords and make music. Well, if you put these few of these tools together with just line quality, you can do amazing things. All right, that's it for line quality, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on art direction secrets, and I cover all this and much more in my portrait drawing course called Mastering the Art of the Portrait. You can find it here on drawjuice.com. And I created the course to help people become better artists, better portrait artists all the way around. So it's an excellent course, excellent resource. So go check it out. Also, if you wouldn't mind, like and subscribe to the channel. If you like what you heard, ring the bell so you won't miss a thing. And I will see you in the next video.